They wouldn't have needed to give up the score if there wasn't the controversial holding penalty. And I say controversial, kind of meaning it and kind of not meaning it. I mean, no, it's controversial, but I don't think the controversy is justified because James Bradbury admitted after the game on that third and eight play that extended the drive and gave the Chiefs more of a chance to run the clock all the way down before they kicked the game-winning field goal. He admitted after the game that he did it. I think the question is, and we talk about this all the time, and you and I say officiate the game the same way in the fourth quarter as you do right. in the first quarter. Officiate yeah. it the same way in the postseason as you do in the regular season. If that's a hold first quarter of week one, it's a hold fourth quarter of Super Bowl. And I think that's what – and this is part of the problem for the NFL because they have stuffed the flag down in the pocket yeah. in the past. All playoffs. The Eagles and their fans expected – that that flag was going to be stuffed down in the pocket here. But Bradbury admitted, pulled the jersey. You were texting last night. He pulled the jersey. You see it right he there. Did. If we replay the not... angle we see right there, the jersey pulls away from Juju Smith-Schuster. Fox showed it on a great down-the-line angle. See that one right there? You don't see that first grab there because it's on the other side. That's the second grab. That, that's the second one. That one's not nearly as bad as the first one. And here, there's the what? Here's the the jersey. See, there's a jersey. I mean, again, I you know, people go, well, it's not that big of a deal. That's not ticky tack. You grab a grown man, you're a strong grown man, and you pull him, and a jersey that's tight as hell on him pulled away from his body. Yeah, you just made a guy who runs four five. Now he runs four eight. I mean, that, that's a huge moment. But Mike, you're right. The problem is that is pass interference a hundred out of a hundred times in the regular season a hundred out of a hundred I mean it's not even close it's double pass interference the problem is in the playoffs there's been like yeah let them play and they've gone too far that way but this was the right call in my opinion you know again if we're gonna let defenders grab and pull and do that then man there's no point in having a good offense or playing zone coverage or doing anything just play man and hold all the time. You know, they had the play set up. This play was set up just for that. And that was the coverage they wanted. And they were double moving it, almost just like the other touchdowns with Tony and Sky Moore. They're thinking he's going to overplay the shallow cross, right? So now they're going to double move off of it. And if you're going to allow holding like that, then damn, you know, then, then we're not going to have a lot of completions or good plays in the football game. I don't think it's the wrong call. It's just the way the playoffs are officiated that make it a little weird, Mike. And one of the things I want to make sure we're absolutely precise about, because this is one of the complaints I saw last night on social media. Well, the ball was uncatchable. It wasn't pass interference. It was holding. The violation occurred before the ball was in the air. Before the ball's in the air, it's holding. Once the ball's in the air, it's interference if the ball is is catchable. He was held before Patrick Mahomes threw the ball. So whether or not the ball is catchable doesn't matter. The holding helped make it not catchable. Right. It knocked the 4-5 down to a 4-8. Right. Right. But it's the, it was a five-yard holding penalty, not a spot foul. Yeah. Put it on the one right. defensive pass interference or it wouldn't have been spot foul. Well, it's, my point is it was a five-yard holding penalty. So catchable or not catchable doesn't matter. matter. It wouldn't have right. been at the one because the foul didn't occur in the end zone, but the ball landed in the end zone. It would have been a touchdown if he had gotten free from it. If he hadn't been held and he had run under it, he may have made the catch and it would have and and then the Eagles would it's just another one of those moments where, geez, if you wouldn't have held, we'd have had more time to try to tie the game. If Pacheco doesn't get tackled, we would have had more time to try the game. If Mahomes just scores instead of getting tackled at the 17, we at least would have had a chance. That penalty is the thing that finally yeah. set up the tick, tick, tick all the way down to eight seconds and the 27-yard field goal. That if Harrison Butker misses that one, you just leave him in Arizona. Oh, you, you don't leave take him. him back to Kansas yeah, City. Yeah, that's right. You don't even take him back. You're just like, yeah, stay out here, forget it. You know, go live in the desert somewhere. We're not bringing you back home. Uh, that, that's exactly right. That's a chip shot. But you know, uh, Mike. I mean, again, uh, I, uh, that that to me is it's pass interference, or holding, whatever you want to call it, all day long. It wasn't catchable, yeah, because you made the guy slow down, he'd be 10 yards farther. 
I mean, he got held twice. Again, catchable doesn't matter. If the, I know. If it the, doesn't I, matter. I don't want to contribute right. to the No, you're the, right. The, the, the stupidness of that conversation. If it's holding, right. if it's holding right. it doesn't matter if it's catchable. You held him before the ball was thrown. And here, here's so the other aspect. five-yard penalty and it's an automatic first down, period. Yeah, period. And here's the other aspect that I don't like a little bit about the conversation going on on social media or TV, right? It's just that it's a little bit. Like they didn't want to call because it it was gonna it affected my entertainment purposes. I just I wanted to see another drive in the Super Bowl, right? And that's where I'm not. I'm like that. That's not why we do this. We don't swallow the flag to add drama to the end of the game. Like or I just want to see one more big drive from the other team too. No, there was a penalty. It had to be called. So I felt like there was a little bit of that, like individual selfishness of, wait, I've been cheated out of a, you know, a monument. It was a great, unbelievable TV experience. One of the greatest games I've ever seen, but I wanted more. I wanted more. And that's, that doesn't mean you don't throw a flag in that moment. And that, that to me was another part of the conversation. At least it bothered me a little when I was scrolling through social media and watching some of the postgame highlight shows. But, you know, the NFL should learn from this to ensure that the officials are ready to call those fouls when they happen. The reason that people were unsatisfied, the reason that they were upset is because they're used to that happening and it not being called when it should be called. So when they finally call it, they're like, what the hell? Why do you call it now when you never call it? And once again, NFL rigged was trending, rigged and all the complaints and the the images photoshopped of Carl Cheffers. Was he the official last night? Who was it? Was it him? I can't remember. In the, in the, uh, you know, the red, the, yeah, it was Cheffers with the, the white and red instead of white and black, all that stuff that we see all the time. And I understand why Eagles fans are upset because we are conditioned to think that in those moments that flag isn't going to be thrown. But here's James Bradbury after the game. Lest there be any doubt, Eagles fans, take it straight from the guy who committed the foul. Here he is this admitting you gotta just that he held it. Juju Smith-Schuster. Right. I mean, that's not up for my judgment. You know, I, I was hoping he would let it go, but of course, you know, he's a ref. It's a big game, um, and it was it was a hold, so they called it. Like ultimate respect much. for that man right that, there. Ultimate. I say, that, I say that pretty much ends it. Ultimate respect. You're right. It ends it. And honestly, you talk about a. a I, I mean, I. I've, that's all I've ever heard about James Bradbury is how what of a stand-up professional human being he is there. But, yeah, I mean, one, I think he's just a man's man and taking blame and, you know, okay, I, I made a mistake. I was in a tough position. He was in a tough spot. You know, here he was at an island, and it's a team that throws crossers all the time. All we talk about is Chiefs crossers all the time. They put him in the spot and go, whoa, you're going to be in a really vulnerable position here. And they called the right play and the right move off of it to even make him more vulnerable. But, like, what a, what a man's man right there. What a good guy, whatever, just to be able to take that on the chin. And, man, the league has to be happy. I mean, was yes. I, I would think Roger Goodell in 345 might have popped another bottle of champagne after he said that just to go, thank God, so we don't have to hear about this, right? And uh, from that standpoint, I, I think it was all positive. It had to be called there. I know it stinks. I wanted to see Philly get the ball and have another chance too. I did. I was, you know, on the edge of my seat. It was great. But, man, I, I, I think we'd be sitting here on the other side of this. If that wasn't called, you'd go, well – then I don't know what's the point of having good receivers or a good quarterback in a big moment like that if we're just going to let guys pull jerseys and do all that in big moments of a, of a Super Bowl. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.